Hey, I'm Kathy Tate, the Bald Warrior from Brisbane, Australia. Hi, I'm Daisy Park from the Florida Keys. Together, we are bald and blonde, embracing the globe. Teaching mindset evolution tools to help you transform your life. Hey everybody, this is Kathy Tate and I am the Bald Warrior. I'm here with Daisy Papp, uh, who is blonde and together we are bald and blonde and we have another amazing episode of our podcast for you today that we have pre-released to help you all in this really really challenging time hi daisy how are you how are you over there in florida keys hello kathy so good to hear you like always i'm so happy to hear you this is the highlight of the week and day and <laughs> so it's wonderful thank you i'm doing very very fine um i'm i'm safe and uh, and staying home you know i behave well which i generally do uh, with or without quarantine and um nevertheless i was observing something really disturbing today and i i'm using the skills i'm teaching otherwise i would not be sitting here uh, with you doing this podcast today Yes, Daisy, and you just mentioned that to me before we started recording this. Do you mind sharing with the audience what it is that happened to you today? Sure. So I went uh, and ran some errands in town here, and uh, as I did, um, I, I was done, and I was on the phone with my uh, childhood girlfriend in Germany, and um, I see a plane in front of me, above me, and it really was not high. And I saw that it's, it's kind of, you know, swinging back and forth and to the right and left. And I saw something is really, it's too tricky to be, to be cool. And, um, and it just crashed in front of my eyes. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Just like that. Yeah, it was a, was a small plane, and now that's very tragic for, of course, the person who was in the plane, the pilot, uh, as I found out later on, it was a pilot by himself. Um, nevertheless, the family and the relatives, uh, the friends, the spouse, it's, it's just tragic. And interestingly, I realized how much it triggers the old wounds within me that I, I, I healed pretty well because uh, um, I don't know if we've ever spoken and shared with our listeners um, my, my mother, my brother and my godfather they crashed in a small plane when I was 17 and so when I saw that plane and then it was really in distress and I saw it crash in front of my eyes and then I saw of course the, the, the smoke coming up and, and it brought in top of what I saw back some old emotional triggers and um, well what do we do then right that's the question but I'm doing okay so I, I took a few minutes to settle myself yeah look I just okay. got entire shivy, shivers up and down my body when you said that because it is so similar to what you went through as a young person and you know I know myself that even when trauma happened so very long ago you can be re-triggered by something similar happening years and years later so easily i agree and not it not necessarily even has to be something similar um, we humans we have five senses right and the five senses are in every bit so okay so let me reframe that um or rephrase that so every single moment in our lives it's almost like we are imprinting through the five senses so it's almost like you you're taking a snapshot um you're sitting there right there in brisbane and to you it's uh, already tomorrow morning to me it's still yesterday evening here local time but i'm speaking <laughs> and um and although you hearing my voice and you're listening to what I say and you're responding and we're conversing friendly and, and peacefully nevertheless meanwhile in your subconscious you're recording through your five senses as well so even though you don't pay attention to the smell in the room or outdoors wherever you are right here right now there is a specific smell 
and there is also a specific taste in your mouth although you may not focus on it because it's not really relevant to you then there's a specific um, kinesthetic sensory system that's recording like like okay so what's the temperature in the room how am i feeling is my stomach filled am i thirsty am i hungry what do you hear the the volume of the voice and what do you see so every single moment actually we're taking a snapshot and at a traumatic event that snapshot it is is almost it's like a blueprint and so even though if i'd only had heard of a plane crash so that would be auditive yeah it could have still triggered me or m maybe many people can relate to that who are listening to us here that there's that specific smell and then all of a sudden oh this smells like when i was a little person when i was a child at grandma's kitchen or when i was in kindergarten oh that smell or that taste oh that just smell it, it tastes like something i remember so it's always the five senses so it's not necessary only yes. necessarily only it makes the visual. complete sense daisy I'm so glad that I'm I'm <laughs> speaking sense <laughs> in a way that it makes sense. Yeah, I look, after I think all that, everybody can relate to that because we all have uh, memories of whatever type that come from however long ago, and that explains exactly how they are recorded within us, and also, of course, how traumatic events are recorded, and we can be triggered by them. And so today, with everything going on, we really wanted to get a bit deeper into, um, you know, those sorts of things and talk about when uh, we are faced with uh, bigger challenges in our life and we find ourselves uh, sort of sinking into a deeper sadness that can be tough to pull yourself out of. And I know that there has been a few times in my life where this has happened to me and I've really struggled to pull myself back up out of it uh, because of the circumstances in my life because I had quite limited understanding of how um, our, our mindset works and, and can keep us stuck and so we wanted to get deeper into this today and give you some tools to help you if you uh, perhaps are not coping all the time very well with with this global challenge that we're facing is really amplifying a lot of things right now and uh, so that's what we want to talk about today um, so a deep sadness um, is is really we believe a repetition of draining thoughts right daisy Yes, uh, I think you really you hit the nail on the head. Although that's my job usually when I do <laughs> my <laughs> my my passionate <laughs> artistic expressions. <laughs> um, but that's another topic. Um, but you 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 really got to the point. So I do believe wherever your focus yes. goes, everything grows. And depending on which direction is our goal, um, either going towards a state of mind or a state of the psyche that other people may even um, call depression. So that state of a deep, deep sadness and repetitive sadness or a state of extraordinary happiness. I believe that, that the energy to reach either one of the extreme we put in there is the same yeah. effort. So it, it's if we would imagine in front of us a spiral, and let's say we're kind of in the middle of that spiral, if we visualize that uh, vertical spiral in front of you, and let's say we're in the middle of it, that would be the neutral state of mind and the neutral state of how I'm feeling. Yes. and. The motion to get into a sad or deep sadness um, emotional state, the way, the length to reach it 
is just as long or as far as to reach the top of the spiral where we feel almost ecstatic. So now it is our responsibility, where do I lay my focus on? Where do I invest my time in? And <clears throat> I believe we mentioned that already in another episode. But there is, there is this, this uh, experiment that they did in a lab and the participants uh, were chosen by one single fact. They all needed to have had experience making a snowball in their life. And what they did, they put some sensors in the palms of the participants and, and then they said, okay, so sit here and, you know, okay, how are you doing? Small talk back and forth and, you know, until the software was up and running and every instrument was set up. And then they, they asked, them, okay, close your eyes and go back to a time when you made a snowball and you may even smell the fresh snow or you, you sense the fresh crisp air and just notice as you're going with your hand into that snow and you grab a quantity of snow and then you just start forming with your two hands that snowball and you may even hear how that snowball crashes there in your in your two hands as you form that snowball and interestingly enough the temperature in the palms of all participants dropped measurably so that that is clear to me after after seeing that as a fact that um, wherever my focus goes everything grows so I focus on a snowball although I'm in a well-tempered room in a lab and nevertheless my palms believe that oh I'm holding a snowball but I think that's where was amazing. the snow? Oh, that is amazing. Oh, in and you know, right as you were saying that, I was imagining it myself because, of course, I've come from New Zealand and have had a few snow seasons and have made, and made a few snowballs in my time. And um, I was, I was imagining the <laughs> crunch of the snow as I was forming the ball and then you know, the fun that we had as we were throwing them to meet each other. Like, snowball fights are just the best. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly it you see and that's how it goes now okay and I take myself here I, I, I volunteer as as the guinea pig because maybe you listeners can have compassion to what happened to me at a very young age that I became an orphan at 17 due to that plane crash and maybe you can imagine how I might have felt although you don't feel you're not connected with me but you may imagine how it must have felt to me and now although you have maybe hopefully never seen a plane crash you may have already just right here right now made a picture in your head although you've not I seen it I certainly have a picture in my head we spent a lot of my childhood flying in small planes Okay, so now, but uh, where does the well, picture come from? Well, probably something I've seen on TV, to be honest, because I've never actually seen a plane crash in real life. But I've been in so many planes that I can imagine it very easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if you continue focusing on it, and if you wanted to feel really, really, really sad right here and now, you give me three minutes, yes. I get you there. No problem. And now here's how you could do it. You com continue thinking of these pictures. You make the colors brighter. The image, even if it's a still picture or if it is a short movie, you bring that screen, maybe you, see, you imagine it seeing it on an iPad, maybe you imagine it looking out through your out, uh, own eyes seeing it, and you just bring that closer and pretend and imagine as if you were looking out of your own eyes seeing it observing it witnessing it that brings it closer your body will respond yes. to it and you will feel awful if you continue thinking about that yes. then you're on the downward spiral yeah. and there you go mm. it's like a recipe it's like when you go to the kitchen i don't know if somebody would like to make a vegetable soup and then you cut the little uh, veggies together and maybe you even grow some veggies in your garden or you get it from the farmers market and <laughs> the recipe for deep sadness is actually 
going through the five senses so you imagine something specifically repetitively so you repeat it repeat it over and over again you you even imagine it even worse as it could be because worst case scenario we have a tendency to to think of that um and then you even add a little smell to it like in that plane crash because i saw the smoke coming up so if i had opened the windows of my car i could have smelled it i i even smelled it on my way home because the wind was blowing it that way and i didn't switch on in, internal circulation on the on the ac um so but you add the smell to it um then you may even have already running tears down and maybe sometimes they they run down your face and then you s you even get the taste of your own yeah. mm -hmm, tears right so you have a specific taste and then there are sounds to it and if you repeat these through the five senses long enough i promise you will be so sad like never before or how much you used to be sad now we can do it the other yes, way around i mean that's what we want to do we want to teach people how to go up the spiral instead of going down the spiral because that will um, stop this, right? Yes. Well, I <laughs> will just key. quickly interject That's here to everybody out there that I do believe, you know, it is normal and okay to feel, um, you know, these, these sad or negative emotions. The key really is, is not to sit in them and dwell in them and go downwards in the spiral. The key is to let them pass through and um, bring yourself back up. Now, the reason why I explained it clearly, the recipe, how to feel really, really sad, because I believe that out there, our listeners, many of them can realize and can, re can relate to it. Oh yeah, yes. actually, that's what I'm doing. Actually, I'm thinking, Oh, so how much time do I spend with that thought that is really devastating and horrifying? Or yes. maybe I make up the pictures to it. Maybe I've never seen it. Because here is one thing. The husband believing his wife is cheating on him suffers just as much as the husband who is really yes. cheated on. Because the mind-body connection is inevitable. And therefore, wherever your focus goes, your body will respond. Now, we want to learn to reverse that, because this is a talent that we all kind of have, that we know how to feel bad oftentimes, and sometimes even longer than necessary, but we are so used to it. Now, we are going to use the same recipe, so the same functions, yes. with a different focus. So, let's say, and I'm, I, I would like of you to volunteer, Kathy. Would you? <laughs> I love being your volunteer. <laughs> <Kathy>. <laughs> okay, so I. You know. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. So here, here's, here's how we do it. Um, and you listeners out there, you just follow along and think your own thoughts, or you can imagine into what what Kathy's response is, and just imagine. So, Kathy, give me one memory so let take a deep breath and close your eyes okay yep and then exhale and just notice as you exhale your shoulders drop and relax a little bit as you didn't even know that your shoulders were tense in the first place and just notice you take another deep breath and your eyelids are just shut glued closed and it is just so comfortable because you feel in your shoulder that something already is is really just kind within you. And now I'd like you to go a little back in time. And as if you could see a timeline where you can see that that shows the direction towards your past. And I'd like you to go back to a time, any time, where there's something, you, you see a memory, it will pop up naturally, automatically, where you felt incredibly grateful, peaceful, and loved at the same time. Well, you, you know, Daisy, it's very easy today because today is actually my son's birthday. And yes. Oh! 
I know. Happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy and birthday to you. Quite incredibly, it seems to me, it's 26 today. And so today is, um, for me, as his mother, an anniversary of the joy that he brought into my life and the inspiration that he's brought me. So it's a really easy day today to have a lot of um, positive memories come back. And one that jumped into my head straight away was his first birthday. Um, and I, I made this oh, okay. incredible <laughs> cake so now. Uh, of Cookie Monster. <laughs> I made all this blue icing and I pressed it through my garlic press to make the fur and it was the best cake I've ever made in my life and then my boyfriend forgot the camera so we never ever got a photo of it but I've got an imprint of it in my head and um, of that day and the little party we had with my friends and I remember feeling incredibly happy, incredibly blessed and incredibly grateful that out of the mess that was my life had come this amazing little human being. And now he's 26, it's, it's quite mind boggling. That is such a beautiful timing, you see. This is, so to our listeners out there, really, I did not know that it's, uh, it's Kathy's son's birthday. So I know him, he's a wonderful, wonderful young man, super creative and really, really a, <laughs> a heart big as, as the globe. And, um, and he, is, he is just a, a, a sweetheart, so really wholeheartedly happy birthday. Um, but I didn't know, so I think the timing is just perfect. So, okay. So thank you for sharing that, Kathy. So I'd like you to just remain with your eyes shut and just take another breather and, and just notice how you represent that memory of your son's first birthday who is today, you know, 26, but nevertheless, in, your, in the past, you have that imprint, although you don't have a physical photo photography of it or picture of it, but yes. it's imprinted within you. And just notice, notice, do you in see color. it in color or in black and white? <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, I just wanted to double check. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, so now, now look at who is in that picture and look at the facial expression of your little baby boy who is so happy and probably full of awe and you know how much work you put into making this cake and you even took out the garlic press and and maybe you even dipped your finger in it and took a taste of the dough. <laughs> I'm with you. I would do the same. <laughs> so just notice, notice the taste of the dough. And just remember how you created that with your hands. And also, you may remember now how you all planned it. And what a pre-joy that was already as you were planning on what you were going to do. And just notice the colors in, in that picture or in that memory and notice if there's a sound to it. Maybe you hear your yes, son it's giggling. Definitely laughter and talking and, and joy joyfulness mm -hmm. in the air. Oh wonderful. Now where do you hear that joyfulness in the air, that laughter? Where do you hear it? Do you hear it more from the right side or from the left side or do you hear it inside of your head? Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, well, first I thought it was inside, but it actually, now you say that, it seems to be coming from the right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so it seems to come from the right. Okay, just notice that laughter. And if you imagined that to that memory, it came with a little bit of a remote control into your hands where you are right at, and you can adjust the volume. Just make the volume perfect. Okay. So that you, that you just hear just enough laughter, but it's not bothering, but it's just wonderful. It's music to your ears, music to your heart, music to, the, yes. to your soul. Oh, okay, perfect. And now I wonder what happens next in the, in the memory. Do you, so we stay on that day in time where it's his birthday. And so, so are you cutting the cake or how, well, he how was did only that one, happen? So he was a little bit small for a candle blowing and, and 
too much drama around the cake. What what I remember next actually is my school friend, who's I'm still friends with today. She brought him one of those little plastic ride-on bikey car things. You know the 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 little tiny mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, plastic cars that that bubs can sit on and use their feet to to move themselves. She bought him one of those, and that's the awesome. Next yes, thing I remember is him ripping open that present and us trying that out. Oh, okay. So you yes. see him in motion there. So can you see him as he's wrapping the paper? Is there sound to you? Yes. So do you hear the paper yes. as it, he's ripping yes. it apart? Uh huh. Okay. And just notice. Um, I'd like you to nevertheless go back one more time to the cake as as you see him joyfully enjoying the taste of that cake that you made so precious and beautiful uh, for yes, him. Yes, he's got it all over his face because it's chocolate underneath. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, super. And, and and you taste a little bit of it too and just notice that, that taste. Good. I made a mean chocolate cake. Mmm. <laughs> I'm getting hungry here. <laughs> okay, so so just notice how the taste of of that cake that you know you put so much effort and love, although it was effortless, but it was filled with love and and with caring and joy yeah. and giving. And just notice how it, that makes you feel. Seeing your little boy sitting there, he's too little for candle blowing. But he's big enough to wrapping or, or, or unwrapping his gift, this little car, and and just notice notice when you see this just right happening in front of your eyes as if it was just happening right now. Notice the joy that fills you and that gratitude right here, right now. Where do you sense it's it in my chest? Body? It's sort of swelling up with it. Mm-hmm. Oh, Is it a yes, comfortable it's, swelling it's up? It's like being filled with love. Oh, filled with love. Wonderful. Okay, so stick with that. So it's filled with love. Now, that filled with love, give me a size of it. You can use inches or centimeters. I'm. I'm imagining um, either one. Oh, I'm going to go so how big like is that? with a uh, football size. Yeah. Oh, like a football size. So, okay, okay. So is it three-dimensional or is it rather two-dimensional? No, it feels two three-dimensional, dimensional, you know, like a, like a swelling, like a, like a balloon blowing up. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, just notice that feeling of that love. <clears throat> That balloon filling up there within you, which is love. It's it's your yeah, love balloon. Yeah, and it was my hope balloon mm-hmm. too. He represented an ability for everything to be better. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now notice how how it feels within you. That swelling, that balloon, that hope balloon, and that love balloon, and just notice a little bit. Is it more? A cooler sensation, or is it more warm? Definitely more warm. Yeah, in your chest. Definitely more warm. Now, if that feeling of hope and love that you're just sensing right here in your body, if it had a color, what color mm, would it be? It's the color of the Cookie Monster cake. This deep blue. <laughs> oh. It's deep blue. Okay. Just notice as you're breathing in naturally and easily and you exhale the next breath you're taking you're breathing in exactly that color of your feeling of love and hope and notice how it fills your chest and that feeling inside there becomes even stronger and just notice as the feeling becomes stronger you can see that it is in motion somehow it spins in one direction or the other and just see it look at it and make it spin faster and as you spin it faster that feeling expands and reaches outside of your body 
and it becomes even stronger and all of a sudden your entire body is filled and covered with that feeling of love and hope. There you go. And as you breathe in one more time, now automatically with every beat of your heart that feeling stays alive. It remains alive 24-7, 365 days a year, a lifetime long for you. And you can breathe and let it go. And just notice that feeling becomes even stronger now that you're breathing in another time and your heartbeat makes it stronger automatically naturally, gracefully, lovingly. And just notice as your entire body is filled with exactly that feeling of love and hope. And notice your foot toes. Notice your toes. You even feel a sensation there in your toes. It may be a little tingly feeling or sensation or it might be the pulse that you feel that is just in the right rhythm with your heart. And your toes are filled with the feeling of love and hope and it travels throughout your foot, reaches your heels, your lower legs, throughout the ankles and then your shin, your knees, your thighs, your back, your belly, even your belly button. And it travels up your spine, that feeling of love and hope. It reaches your shoulders, reaches your neck, your throat, and it drops off your shoulders naturally, gently, lovingly, peacefully. Reaches your upper arms, your elbows, your lower arms, your wrists, your hands, even your fingerprints. And just look at a little bit, not with your eyes, but, but with your focus. What's the sensation in your fingertips? You feel it tingling or you feel the pulse? The pulse? I feel the pulse through my whole body. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Because it is so active. It's reactivated because this is your resource. And all it needed was a little focus so it can be alive forever for you, to support you, to help you, to assist you to invite you to stay and remain on that upward spiral no matter what and who and where is trying to push you down. Because that is not relevant anymore. And you now see, by, by focusing and sensing the pulse in your fingertips, throughout your fingers, that feeling travels back up to your shoulders. It even reaches now your vocal cords. And every word you've ever spoken, and every word you will speak, is just through and through filled with that love and hope. And notice your tongue. All of a sudden your tongue just relaxes and it's just resting there in the bottom of your mouth. It might feel a little unusual and just let it rest there because your tongue is filled with that feeling of love and hope as well and it reaches your entire skull, it fills your skull, reaches your brains, your ears, your skin on your face, the roots of your hair you once had and the roots of your hair that you will have or will not have. The roots of your eyebrows and your eyelashes, it reaches your eyes and that feeling of love and hope makes you see the love and hope because you see through the love and hope. And just notice as it reaches your ears one more time, everything you heard in the past that might have been unpleasant 
or hurtful or painful or just uncomfortable or just to your disliking. Everything changes because your ears are filled with that feeling of love and hope. And just notice everything you heard so far just changed. And everything you're going to hear is changing here right now as your ears are filled with love and hope. And just notice as your thoughts may come and go, the feeling of love and hope reaches every thought you've ever thought and every thought you'll ever think. And notice how your timeline towards your past is filled with that feeling of love and hope. And where you are right here, right now, listening to my voice, you know the date and time of day, but you send it back into your past and you may meet some younger versions of yourself in situations or settings or memories that may pop up naturally, automatically, gracefully, peacefully, where exactly the younger version of yourself at that point in time needed the feeling of love and hope the most. And I'd like you to see how it reaches the younger versions of you, back there. As many memories as you wish, or as show up automatically, naturally. And I'd like you to send that feeling of love and hope back to the moment of your birth and just notice the circumstances around your birth. Everything changes and even the room and the colors and the feelings and sensations and the noises, the voices, everything just, just beautifully transforms because everything now is filled with that feeling of love and hope. And I'd like you to push that feeling of love and hope a little bit further into your past to the moment when you were conceived. Just notice what happens here. Because as you're growing, as the tiny, tiny little embryo into the beautiful, perfect baby that you were born as, just notice it's already growing with that feeling of love and hope. And I'd like you to send it even further back. Send it back to all your ancestors, known and unknown. That feeling of love and hope. And just notice how the entire family tree just changes. You don't know how that transformation is even possible, which does not matter because the only thing that really matters is how you feel it right here, right now in your chest. That warmth, that dark blue, cookie monster colored feeling of love and hope. And as it comes back here and you come back here to where you're at right here, right now, I'd like you to send that same feeling into your future. Send it into the next 10 minutes. That feeling of love and hope and send it into the next 10 hours. Send it into the next 24 hours. Send it into the next 24 days, 24 months. And in between, between now and in 24 months, just notice what happens. In a few months from now, there's one point in time, you don't know exactly the date, and neither do I, but notice how your life looks like now that it is filled with love and hope. And just notice the people you meet are also filled with love and hope. And notice their facial expressions. And maybe there are not a lot of people who are really fond of you today, but there they already are because you're filled with that feeling of love and hope. And just notice as you're surrounding yourself in these future moments with the people who are filled with love and hope, just as you are. And they see you for who you are, and they value you for who you are. 
they see the treasure within you and you see their love and their hope and their appreciation and gratitude and joy and send it into the next 24 years and send it into the next 240 billion years and send it further away, send it into eternity and once it arrives there at the eternal point although we cannot mathematically account for it but imagine as if you were able to notice exactly where that point in the future is where eternity is and just notice that feeling just turns around it spins even faster it becomes bigger and greater and larger and stronger and it comes right back right here to you and you can put your hand on your chest as it arrives here right here to you and just notice the feeling of love and hope becomes even stronger and it is so strong you're already radiating it it is purely love and hope and joy and it fills the room where you're in and it reaches even further out out of that room it fills the building or if you're sitting in the forest or in nature it fills a huge area it even reaches the sky and just notice how with every breath you take and every beat of your heart the entire globe is covered with this dark blue beautiful, wonderful, joyful feeling of love and hope and just notice notice what that feeling does to you because the joy increases within you and the gratitude increases even much more and just notice that it reaches to the sky, reaches the moon and the stars and the planets and the fixed stars, other galaxies and universes, whatever there is out there, known and unknown. But it's such a pure feeling of love and hope. And just notice, put your hand over your heart and just notice the gratitude you're noticing feeling just right here right now you're so grateful you feel it so deeply that you're so grateful for this transformation that just took place naturally easily gracefully so fulfilling it's filling you even with more joy gratitude love and hope and just notice how your heart is beating. You may feel it in your palms. That's right. And just notice as you're breathing, your shoulders are relaxed and you're purely filled with the feeling of love and hope. And with the next breath you're taking, you fill up your lungs. It reaches all your cells of your body. You're filled inside and out with the feeling of love and hope. I'd like you to slowly come back into the room or to the chair, or wherever you're at right here, right now. Take one deep breath. Smell the smell of that hope and love. There you go. And just exhale and come back into the here and now and you can open your eyes whenever you're ready that was quite incredible daisy i went off into this space journey towards infinity and the whole spin of this spiral changed direction and came back at me good good girl <laughs> great. i love it and I had this pulsing color behind my eyes the whole time that changed from the blue to the purple and then when it spun around and changed direction it went a bit red and then it came back to the purple and blue again and my mm. whole body has been pulsing with this energy and this feeling of love and, and joy and hope now let me ask you the question where did the feelings come from uh they're there they're there inside me and that memory invokes them mm -hmm. so now this is so important i so appreciate 
I so so appreciate. So my my heart is filled with joy. Hmm. Now I how oh, I I really really like that, because you just realize that it is you who can produce these feelings of joy, love, and hope, because you just did it. Yes. You listen to some some words and my voice, but that you were the one producing it. Yes. That means that means even though you let's say you you say oh well but i i would need to listen to daisy's voice no 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 because now you already have a memory that you listened to me once and you were able to produce it so you have a memory of that and therefore you can reproduce that by just thinking of it yes yes and it will just bring you right back to there now this is how we do it how we get out of the sadness and i hope it became very visual although we are not visual here, uh, but that it becomes very clear that the effort going downwards or upwards is the same. Yes, absolutely. And it's your decision. Yes. And now imagine in front of you the letter Y, right? It's like that one one vertical little bar and then you have almost like, like a V in top of that vertical bar. Yeah. Now, it's like as if you were traveling on that vertical bar upwards and you come to a fork. Every single moment in your life, you're at a fork and you can choose which way to go. Yes, I absolutely Do I go downwards? believe that, yeah. Upwards or downwards? Do I spend time with the thought, oh, ah, yeah, but you know, I remember Daisy told me about the plane. Oh, poor thing. No, 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 no. You, you can think that, but let it go in an instant. Yes. And focus on the memory that makes you feel good, that that is just precious to you, that brings you joy. And every single one on this globe has at least one memory that makes them feel good or loved and safe and peaceful. And if, if, in case some of our listeners would say, no, no, I don't have any of those. Okay? Question? Do you know anyone who has experienced such a deep joy, such an extraordinarily deep gratitude, love, and peace? Maybe some of, of our listeners may say, no, I don't know anyone. Great. Then let's take the next step. Your thoughts are free and your fantasy is free as well make it up yes absolutely be, be little be little steven spielberg and just make it up and make it colorful and make the circus music to da, 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 da. for example make it joyful put the flowers there or or put the balloons there or or invite the animals the squirrels and the puppy dogs and the little kittens or the dolphins or the whales whatever you like or some people like snakes you know yeah, correct, whatever it right. is so yes. just invite them all in there create your hmm? own i love it Yes. Yeah, create it. So there is truly, at the end of the day, no excuse. Oh, well, I can't do that. Yeah, there isn't. And actually, you know, that brings up something that I learned a couple of, of, well, I think I've known instinctively all my life. But when this person said this, it just clicked a lot of things for me. And they said that life is actually just a series of tiny choices. And each choice either takes us further away or further towards where we really want to be. And it is just that simple. Every moment you get to choose. And it's up to you to make that choice for yourself and to choose what you want your reality to be. And the reality is always right here, right now. I may not be able to create the reality I want to see tomorrow because maybe I'm not going to live, I'm, I'm making up a story, okay? I'm not going to live in that beautiful castle with Prince Charming and, you know, a herd of white horses and, and black ponies and, okay? So uh, maybe I'm not able to create that, but I am responsible and I can take full responsible of how I'm feeling right here, right now. And if I'm not feeling good right here, right now, go to a memory or make it up 
make it up in the most beautiful colors. Use all your five senses. Put a smell to it. Put a taste to it. Notice how it feels, how it would feel if you were be sitting in there or standing in there or just being there. Make it up and notice and focus because wherever your focus goes, everything grows. That's fact. And I mean it in a humble way. Yes. I've never yeah. seen it not... It's like gravity. It's like, you know, I try to levitate these pens here over my desk and, you know, guess what? <laughs> it's just not working for me. <laughs> yes, and I have to say that by Create Your Own Reality, I actually am talking about mindset, not about physical surroundings. Yeah. Because for me, my reality is how I feel and how I think about the world and how I want to make the future different for myself. So that's what I mean by reality. And I think that we all can direct that. Um, and using this, this teaching that you'll give sharing here with us today is a really powerful tool to do that. Um, and I think that some of us at some, some level have kind of instinctively known this because I know that I've used my son throughout my life as inspiration when I've been in my darkest toughest times it's thoughts of him um, needing me as a child and relying on me and um, loving me uh, that kept me with my head above water instinctively because he was my good thing and I made a decision that he was always going to be my good thing and I would I would use it as inspiration and it's, but this gives us a real tool to understand why that is and to how to actively use it to make your life better. I think this is just an incredible tool that you've shared with us today. And, you know, you guys can save this um, onto your devices uh, and um, uh, listen to the meditation part at any time over and over to help you if you need some to be stepped through it. Sure. And in fact, sure. we could and probably pull this out and just make it its own little audio for people too, couldn't we, Daisy, that they can download and use? Oh, absolutely. We can do that. Um, I prepare the audio file and you put it out there and then it's up to the listeners where they download it. You, you will let them know where. Yes, <laughs> we, we do yes. job sharing here. <laughs> 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 yes, we'll Over the globe. Do we do it globally, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And here's one more thing I think that that's, that that comes handy. Um, really, guys out there, ladies and gentlemen, and and the youth or the elderly, please, that it's never too late. Take a piece of paper or take a journal, and start writing down three things that you're either grateful for right here, right now. Something that makes you feel good right here right now or something that you feel proud about what you achieved right here right now and if you so do that th and please I know everybody likes to use their notepad and the, the iPad and the smartphone and the computer no please take a pencil or a pen and write it on a physical sheet of paper and you know, you just put three dots there. You don't even have to put the numbers. But right, so put three of these there today. Today is a good day. And tomorrow, I'd like you to write another three to that. And if you do that for ten days, a period of ten days, you have a sheet of thirty items that are really positive and powerful thoughts for you personally. And whenever you feel that mm, maybe the downward spiral is kicking in again, you have that sheet. After you've finished and accomplished that sheet, take a picture of it with your with your phone. Put it on your screen sh saver, or, or, you know, print it out as a as a little photograph and put it on your nightstand, or make a copy of it. And whenever you just feel the tiniest tendency, oh, I think I'm getting sad. You just have that sheet of paper where you can put your focus on easier than, oh, yeah, but I feel so down, what should I think of? No, you have physically something in your hand and you remember it's true because you were the one writing it. Absolutely. This is your story and your history and you have it and then you linger with each of these 30 points. And if you linger with each of these 30 points for one minute each, 
then you spend 30 minutes of feeling good and that is much more than the average human does consciously per day that's incredible now you like that Oh, well, you're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, the just thought lovely. that people don't spend at least 30 minutes a day feeling wonderful is, in, is incredible to me because I try and spend most of the day feeling good. Um, and it just goes to show that we can be really careless with our positive energy. Yeah, and uh, you're very fortunate uh, based on your evolution and your path and your journey because you were open to learn and to, to do your homework and do the self-development. Not everyone is there yet. Yes, and you yes, know, we, right. we, we can't know our listeners, some of them, maybe that's the very beginning of their journey, maybe some of them are very advanced. Nevertheless, even the most advanced ones can use reminders from time to time. So even I'm using that. I, I'm doing this and I developed these skills and, and tools and things like over 20 years, you know, what you could do and easily so that it's really something every five-year-old could do. Um, but nevertheless, sometimes I am sitting down and do it myself because otherwise something that happened to me earlier today could really, really wear me down. And yes. then, okay, so it wears me down. And then how to the next question is, well, how long am I planning on staying there? Yeah, yeah. But when I feel I'm already on that downward spiral, take that piece of paper. You can, you know, even draw some little flowers on it or write some cute words like meow if you like cats or woof if you like dogs or, you know, make it beautiful. Make it like, like sweet for you. It's very you know, personal. I, it's I've very actually intimate. got visions um, coming to me of how you can do this with your whole family, guys. You can... Uh, sit down with your kids and get them to write some happy um, memories and grateful um, points down and you could get out the old photographs or the magazines and you can make vision boards with them so that they too have something like this that they can focus on. I think this now is imagine. something that everybody can do in their own way, whether you write on an A3 paper and hang it on your wall or whether you do it on your device and, and you save it as your screensaver or whether you make something to give to your grandparents about memories with them. You know, this is something that everybody can do and use as a really valuable tool. And now imagine if a family sits down, they're all worried and they're all kind of, you know, really concerned. Okay, so when will I be able to go back out and play football, or soccer or cricket or tennis? Or when am I going to go back to school? Am I missing too much? Well, oh my God, what's going to happen to my work? Imagine if there is a, a family of four in one apartment or in one household and everybody is on this downward spiral but then you give them a tiny little homework like that. Imagine the entire dynamic can change within 10 minutes. Absolutely, yes. And I actually think that, you know, something like this happening to the whole world at once might just be a big push for us to be doing exactly these things. Mm. I so agree with you because uh, the fear pandemic is really, it's, it's, it's worse than anything else. And um, what happens, I, I spoke with a doctor this morning, he, sweetheart, he woke me up at <laughs> after three and a half hours of sleep, so <laughs> I was not really happy. But I, I really appreciated his phone call and he told me what fear actually does to the, to the membranes of the cells. And um, I'm not a doctor. I, I understand what he's telling me. What I got out of it, that fear is very, very crucial to avoid in our everyday life, especially in times like that, because the immune system is impacted immediately. So mm. we want to reverse that. Yeah. The more happy moments you focus on and feel them right here, right now, then you already did something good for yourself and you will look better you will feel better, you will be a better companion, the household will be less tense, you know, so it's, let's get up on this upward spiral. Hmm? Yeah, absolutely. And then I'm so much looking forward how, how people do that. And they could even send us pictures to, to our emails or, or on, on, in the messengers, on, on Facebook or, or on Instagram. 
so that, that we would love to see that because we, we so love like, like your that, feedback that would be amazing yeah. that would be amazing yeah. please do send us either pictures of yourselves or the the things that you've done from taken from this exercise or some feedback about whether it's been helpful for you and and um how you've connected with the upward spiral that would be amazing mm. that's awesome <laughs> good <laughs> wonderful Thank you so much for volunteering, Kathy. Oh, it's always a pleasure. I send you Daisy. air kisses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we better wrap it up there. Looks like we've just hit the one hour mark. Um, so thanks everybody out there for giving us your time and listening. And hopefully you did that little exercise with me. It certainly is really powerful and works. Um, and do feel free to do it again as often as you need. Um, because we, Daisy and I, are doing this in the belief and the hope that it helps you out there uh, change the way you feel about what's going on so that we can together uh, have a positive impact. I agree. And actually, everything that you hear that we offer here in, in these podcast episode, episodes, uh, okay, Kathy worst case we cut it out if you don't like what i'm going to say but it's really it's like toilet paper <laughs> because it only works when you use it <laughs> so okay so what an ad, apt and an interesting analogy daisy <laughs> <laughs> yes well actually a few of my teachers used that and you know when i took them so seriously and they said daisy you got to use it you know it's like tp otherwise it's a poopy <laughs> so forth i, I don't want to make the picture here right <laughs> because oh, too late, otherwise too late. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, thank you so much for for having me and thank you so much for taking your time kathy and and um I send you much love and I send much much love into into the universe you know wherever it's reached I'm I'm glad when people embrace it I I'm sending it uh, purely and yes I'm looking forward to as to, we to do from one side of the globe to the other our virtual love and hugs to all of you out there uh, from Australia to America and around the globe we are bold and blonde mindset evolution powered by self recoding and we will see you on our next episode. Thanks so much for your time today. Okay, bye-bye.